Hi, I'm Graham Hunt and welcome to our home. I'm also the architect for this renovation and I'm a partner at Delisle Hunt Wood Architects. The house was a late Victorian single storey terrace which had two attic bedrooms added in the 70s. It's situated within a heritage conservation area which means that the front facade and the front roof could not be altered. It also meant that the height of any rear extension could not exceed the existing ridge height, which was quite limiting in terms of ceiling heights with any first floor extension, but it also limited what we could, where we could locate PV panels. The house is also under the flight path to Sydney Airport, so any new work required acoustic treatment. So why renovate? The rear of the house had existing roofs which were 40, 40 years old and rusting and in need of repair. There was only one bathroom on the ground floor which opened directly into the dining room. The upstairs bedrooms, and you can see one in the photo on the right here, overheated in summer and were cold in winter as they were poorly built. The middle of the house on the ground floor was dark, needing lights on during the day. The house faced east and west with no north facing windows, which limited the solar gain we were getting in winter. You can see here a ground floor plan of the house in, long in the east west direction. The only new work on the ground floor was the refurbishment of the existing bathroom, and you can see the new airlock, so, which opens into the living area. We also added a new deck in the rear yard, as well as additional landscaping. Here is a plan of the first floor of the house, showing the new bedroom and bathroom. We tried to retain as much of the existing structure as possible and we only added 10 square metres of new floor area, keeping our footprint as small as possible. You can see in blue on the left where the PV panels were installed on the rear roof. The original part of the house received various treatments. Um, there was a new metal roof with breathable membrane at the rear above the dining room and kitchen, which also had ceiling insulation added. Some new windows were added to, to some of the rooms. Some existing windows were replaced as in the attic bedroom. All existing doors and windows were sealed to minimize heat loss. Ceiling fans were added where possible and all new lights were to be LED. The first floor extension is mainly a, a new bedroom, which has large north facing window with eaves. There is also a west facing window, which is fitted with an adjustable external awning. All the new windows are timber with high solar gain, low E glazing with an acoustic interlay for sound control. They're fitted with internal blinds with side seals, which you can see in the detail photo on the left, so as to minimise heat transfer. The ceilings were fitted with R4 rock wall bats and all new walls were fitted with R2.5 high density acoustic bats, as well as breathable membranes to all new walls and roofs to reduce risk of condensation. The external cladding is WeatherTex, which has a very good um, footprint, uh, a very renewable product. Other features included in the renovation were all internal paints were low VOC paints. External paints were a very good quality mineral paint, which bonds with the existing masonry and we're expecting to get a life out of that paint of about 60 to 80 years. In the upstairs bedrooms and hallway installed a wool bamboo blend carpet. We added honeycomb blinds to new and existing windows. The new windows and skylights increased natural light and ventilation. 
the skylight you can see in the hallway here is openable, allowing um, purging at night of hot air. All the new ceiling fans are efficient DC fans. And where possible, we have added in more indoor plants into the home. Energy efficiency measures that have been added are a three kilowatt PV system on the rear roof. A timer has been added to the electric storage heater. It was not very old and instead of replacing it, we've added a timer so that it only comes on during the day when the PV system is, is most likely to be generating. As I mentioned, all new lighting is LED and we've used minimum recessed down lights so as to not interfere with the ceiling insulation. We replaced an old inefficient unhealthy unfluid gas heater with efficient heat pump AC. In the bathrooms, we've installed four star shower heads, five star taps and four star toilets. And shortly we will be replacing our old gas cooktop with a new induction cooktop which means we can then disconnect our gas meter. In the rear garden, we've installed a new deck and we built planter beds using recycled bricks from the demolition. We've planted native plants in the front nature strip, as well as we're now growing a lot more veggies and small dwarf fruit trees. We have kumquats, blueberries, passion fruit, strawberries, and lots of green veg. We also have a worm farm, and we've added plants into the light well between the original bathroom and the sitting room. And you can see in these photos on the right, the, there is a new glass door between the shower and the bathroom and the light well, which can be opened to allow fresh air and outlook. We, Enjoy our new home as it is now much more comfortable thermally and, and we believe it's a much healthier place to live. I'd like to thank all the people involved in the project, the builder, Anthony Jackson from Creative Habitat, the structural engineers, Gilcom, the acoustic consultant, Je Jeffrey Ho from Central West, Joe Fisicaro Electrical who installed the PV system and Onyx Electrical. The photographs were taken by Rowan Jackson from Dr. Excelsior. Thanks very much and I hope you enjoyed the tour of the home.